What's up, y'all? I am back for another video. Um, today, I am reviewing um, Buckaroo ba Banzai. This is one I've never heard of. Um, a friend of mine recommended it to me. Um, uh, my friend Mara recommended it to me. Um, and, um, who, by the way, I say you should check out her streams and stuff. She, man, she does pretty good shit. Anyway, um, I, the only thing I know is that Peter Weller and Jeff Goldblum were in this movie. And watching it, I didn't even watch a trailer. I was gonna watch a trailer, but I decided not to. But decided to watch the movie, and my god, I actually enjoyed it. It's it's out there. Um, you know, it's it feels like an old school, like those old school sci fi movies where the plot is just you know it's crazy sci fi designs like the aliens and. I like the cast. The cast is pretty good. You got John Lithgow. You got fucking Jeff Goldblum, Peter Weller, Christopher Lloyd. Like, that's a pretty good cast right there. Um, I thought um, him as uh, Christopher Lloyd as Dr. Lazardo is pretty good. Like, you know, he's a basic, simple villain. He wants to steal Bonsai's, uh, Bonsai's uh, overthruster, which, you know, the, the name. <laughs> but, like, it's one of those things that where... I was saying this after I was watching it. I was like, I can kind of like, even though it's out there, you just kind of go with it. You just kind of go, you don't like, you just go with, go with the flow of this movie. You don't question anything. You're not like, okay, why is this happening? Okay, this is happening now. I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> um, I actually really enjoy the soundtrack. I think the soundtrack is like one of my favorite things throughout the film. I love how 80s it is, and I love the the Hong Kong Cavalier Band. <laughs> Fucking name is so good. And Jeff Gold, like, the dynamic between the band themselves is some of the best things. Like, for me, like, you can get pretty far with the movie, like, even, like, to a point where maybe things don't fully make sense. If you have good characters, you can get pretty far with me. Like, I can, I can take a lot of things. If you have good characters carrying your movie, and I feel like that's what this was. Like, just anytime they were on screen just talking is some of the... And I love how they tie World of Worlds with this, saying it was the arrival of the Electroids, which is this aliens you see throughout the film. Even though, yeah, the design's pretty weird. <laughs> I fucking love it. Like, the ship design is out there. Like, it's one of those things you just kind of... You just kind of accept it. Like, you know, I, I just don't question anything. And honestly, um, even though, yeah, it's out there, it's a fun little flick. It, it It's simple. I love the idea of an eighth dimension. It, it means, you know, yeah, they wanted to start some, apparently, yeah, they wanted to start, like, an entire franchise. Like, even at the end of the movie, they had, like, the title for the next one that unfortunately never happened. So, I would have actually watched it, but... Yeah, it's a fun one. I it you know, it's Peter Weller a couple years before Robocop and yeah. I definitely recommend it. Um the only the only I think negative I really have is Penny. I think it's another case where I think the chick who played her just every time she was on screen, some of the lines she was saying just didn't do it for me. But it was fine. Like I think everybody else literally carries the movie. Christopher Lloyd's in it. <laughs> I'm just I'm that's all good for me. So Um, yeah, um, tomorrow we're going to continue down the Hellraiser franchise with Hellraiser 6, Hellseeker. Never seen this one. I, I just, be better in, be, blah, just be better than Inferno. That's all I really need. I don't need it to be the greatest thing ever, even be as good as the first two movies. <laughs> if you can just be decent, even just decent like four, I, I, I can't even accept that. Just be better than fucking the last one, because Inferno was just pathetic. So I'm just hoping you can just be better than that. We'll see. Kirsten apparently comes back, so maybe there's a chance. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, Buckaroo Banzai. I would give this film about like a 7 out of 10. It's a fun little flick, man. I, I really think. <coughs> I 
And then, <coughs> so basically, yeah, and I love how, yeah, you just. <coughs> it's one of those movies where, yeah, like the plot basically is he gets transported, Buckaroo, to the eighth dimension. We learn that these creatures called electro not electroids, electroids, not electroids, have invaded the planet, and uh, they tie. I love how they tie War of the Worlds into it. You know, nineteen thirty eight, <coughs> and uh, Buckaroo has a band, and yeah, he has this uh, thing technology called the Overthruster, which the name <coughs> it's kind of crazy because. This is a little bit, like a year or so before Back to the Future, but you do have a little time travel element in there. And um, I think in general, I think another positive I really have, yeah, some of the designs are a bit out there, you know, but I enjoy it. Like, I think I like some of the practical, yeah, like there are scenes where the, like, ships are flying and it doesn't look good. Like, you can clearly tell it's like a green screen or something kind of, but it's fine. I, like, this is one of those things I can live with that. Like, if you can just keep me going, and I think that's what thing I've been going to say throughout this video, is that the characters for me, just the dynamic between uh, Bonsai and his band is just so good. Like, they have, like, good chemistry. Like, you just feel like they've been, you can tell they've been working with each other for a while. And you can tell this world is lived in. And that's a big positive for me. If you're gonna, even though yeah, th they were they wanted to do more and they didn't end up doing more. You could tell they they were trying to set this world up. Yeah, this world's really out there, you know the aliens. And I love just they're not in like fancy ships. They're in fucking like a, a news like a like a news van or it looks like a news van. Basically, it's like um, I say going into this movie, you just gotta. Definitely turn your brain off. This is definitely a turn your brain off kind of movie. But it's one of those, you can just kind of go with it, though. Or at least for me, I just went with it. Like, when things started happening, I'm like, okay, I'm not questioning anything. <laughs> I'm not, like, I don't, I didn't even need to turn my brain off. It just kind of just went with, kind of went with the flow with this movie. I actually think the movie has some pretty good pacing. It gets going pretty quick. I, like, yeah, the technology scenes don't look the best, but they still, it was still good. The dynamic, like, I'm going back to the dynamic between the team is so good. And the villain, uh, Dr. Lazardo, who escapes, who wants to get the overthruster from, from, uh, Bonsai. It's, like, just simple. He has simple motive. They don't go over, blow, like, and yeah, no sympathy bullshit with him. His backstory is very simple. He just wants the overthruster because he made the original one. And that's it. And then you learn that the Electroids have um, been in Earth since 1938 because of the Bonsai team realized Buckeye. I'm going to say the Cavaliers just for this instance. Yeah, realized that. And then this is where they tie War of the Worlds, which I really like. I think it was a, a solid way to do it and basically say that. Because they even say in the movie that, um, because uh, they had, a, you know, they had Orson had to come, Orson Welles had to say, oh, it was fake. That was because it was actually the Electroids who arrived instead of Mar uh, Martians, which I really thought was a very well done, very smart way to tie it in. And then, yeah, the Electroids end up taking Penny, who she's Buckaroo's like ex girlfriend kind of ex-girlfriend or girlfriend. I, she just, to me, is probably the biggest negative of the movie. I just think, even for, like, not the... Even though this is not the best movie, objectively-wise, objective-wise shit, it... She just... I just... I, I don't know if it was the actress or the way she just... The actress played her or if it was the character was written. I... No. I, I think she's probably the biggest negative, but... She's not in a lot of scenes, or at least she's not the focus of a lot of scenes. Like, she ends up getting kidnapped by the Electroids, and they end up taking the Overthruster to uh, Lazardo, who starts, like, torturing her. Like, he he was definitely... John Lithgow, I love how he hands it up. 
I think that's the other thing about this movie. A lot of the actors ham it up and they try to they try to take it so seriously. You just go with it. I really do like that. And like I said, John Lithgow's great. I mean, he's in um, the first Shrek. <laughs> so, uh, so Bonsai ends up trying to get her back. Yeah, he ends up getting taken. And this is where one there's one Lectroid. Um, I don't remember his name, but he's basically like the good one. And then there's a guy, the other ones in like dreads, which is fucking funny. So they end up going to try to get a Bucker Bonsai back. And yeah, Bonsai ends up breaking out, meeting up with his team. And they end up rescuing um, Penny, who's like injured. And then, yeah, they confront the bad guys. And they just, yeah, start to get a, the final fight. Um, Bonsai ends up defeating um, Dr. Lizardo. Um, um, celebrating with Penny. Kind of like, you know, simple ending. It's not a si very simple movie. The, mu like, the music is actually really good. And actually fits the movie. Very 80s. I love how 80s the music is. And, uh... Yeah, like, I really in general love the dynamic between the, the, the Cavaliers. They have like such like you could tell like they've been doing this for a while. Or at least they portray it that way and it's believable. So like with good characters you can get very far with me. So I can almost overlook a lot of things in this. Yeah, like some of the CGI doesn't look the best. Some ship designs I'm like, okay, like the ship in the end where that was in the battle did not look that good. I didn't really like the design, but Whatever, I can overlook it. But uh yeah, I would give this movie a seven out of ten. It's a fun one. It it knows what it is. It has a fun dynamic, it has a fun score. Feels like it feels like an old, like like almost like a serial in a movie form. And you could tell they were trying to set up other movies because it was gonna they're gonna fight like the World Crime League. I think that's what the title was. So it's like one of those things. It sucks that it didn't, you know, it flopped and didn't get a sequel, but the cast was fun, and yeah, I'd recommend it. You just, it's a fun, zany little sci-fi flick. That's really all I could really say, so. Um, but yeah, tomorrow, I am going to be doing, like I mentioned, Hellraiser, Hellseeker. Just be better than the last one. And hopefully Doug Bradley at least has some good lines if he can be good in it maybe he could carry it a little bit but we'll see so that'll be tomorrow but other than that i'm gonna take a hit and uh peace out <coughs> as usual talk to y'all tomorrow Love Joe Biden.